Welcome ladies and gentlemen, my name is Brian McLogan and in this video, I am going to show you how to simplify 36 trigonometric identities using the product and the sum. So what we're going to do is we're going to work through these examples and in addition to working through them, we're also going to use the quotient identity as well as the reciprocal identity. So you're going to want to make sure you brush up on those identities if that is something that you do not feel comfortable with or at least have them right next to you as we work through this worksheet because that's going to be in a lot of my explanations as I work through each, each example is referring to those quotient and reciprocal identities. Now, the first example is fairly easy um, because we don't really need to apply an identity here except for the division property, which basically states that if you have an expression or a function, you know, divided by itself, that's just going to equal one. So the first example is just going to be one. Now, in the next example, we really can't do anything right now. Um, however, we can rewrite secant using the reciprocal identity. So we have sine of x times, we can, instead of secant of x, we can write that as one over cosine of x. Now, when you, you can write sine of x as over one, so therefore you're left with sine of x over cosine of x, and that is just gonna equal tangent of x. For the next one, we have cotangent of x times cotangent of x. Again, that's a function multiplied by itself. That's like, you know, two times two is two squared, right? Or three times three is three squared. Um, you know, or if you were going to say um, x times x, that's x squared. So this is going to be cotangent of x squared. However, our notation that we commonly use here is cotangent squared of x. And so these represent the exact same thing. Just wanted to make sure that we're on the same page as far as our notation goes. Um, so the same thing, if I have cosine of x times cosine of x, that's just going to be cosine squared of x. Now the division one is um, a lot of times gets a little tricky here. So what I'm first going to do is I'm just going to rewrite these as fractions. So secant is one over cosine of x divided by cosine of x. So you can see we actually have, you know, three fractions here. We have, or two fractions. We have this big fraction and then we have a fraction in the numerator. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rewrite the denominator as a fraction. So therefore I can multiply by the reciprocal. Okay, so now I have cosine over cosine, which we know just equals one, right? And that's gonna leave me with one over cosine squared of x, right, over one. Well, I don't really need to write this. Actually, you know what, let me just write it out. I'll do this this one time. Cosine of x over cosine of x. All right, so obviously, one over cosine squared of x is equal to secant squared of x, all over cosine of x over cosine of x, which is just one. So therefore you can see the final answer is just cosine or secant squared of x. So that is a very long way of going about it, but I wanted to at least have one example where you can kind of see the work that I do. For the next one, I have cosine of x times tangent of x. I can use the quotient identity here. Now the tough thing with tangent and cotangent is you have to decide if it's best to use the um, quotient or the reciprocal functions. And it really just comes into practice. I know that tangent is sine over cosine, and since cosine's in the denominator and I'm multiplying it by a cosine, I know those are gonna divide out, so I'm gonna use the reciprocal identity. So cosine of x times sine of x over cosine of x. Now you can see those just are going to divide out, which is just gonna leave me with a sine of x, right? So you can see how those divide out right there. Or they divide to one, as we could say. Let me actually just write two of them in there. Um, and again, if you were to use like one over cotangent, then you'd have one over cosine times one over cotangent, which wouldn't really help you simplify it out unless you again eventually did the quotient identity. So now this one is just gonna be the kind of the same as this one, but now we have secant in the denominator. So therefore I'm gonna write cosine of x over one over cosine of x using the reciprocal identities. Now. Again, my goal here is again to get my denominator to equal one. So one over cosine, all I need to do to multiply, the, to get that to be one is just multiply by cosine of x. And remember to keep your fractions equivalent, you multiply by cosine of x in the numerator as well as the denominator. And therefore that's gonna give me cosine squared of x over, I'll just do it one more time, cosine of x over cosine of x which equals cosine squared of x over one, which equals cosine squared of x. Okay, so now I'll just kind of skip through that process a lot. You, I'll just write that as one and I just won't even write it anymore. 
Um, for next one, it's kind of very similar to this one. It's just now with sines. So let's just kind of write it over here. So it's one over sine of x over sine of x. I'll multiply this by one over sine of x, one over sine of x. And eventually guys, the goal of doing this worksheet is that you guys can go ahead and do this in your head, right? So that's gonna go to one, so that's gonna be left with one over sine squared of x, which is going to equal cosecant squared of x. So a nice little breather from all this math, sine of x over sine of x is just equal to one. <sighs> uh, for the next one, I'm not gonna wanna use the cotangent identity, I'm gonna wanna use the quotient identity. So here I have sine of x over cosine of x, and here I'm gonna use the reciprocal identity, one over sine of x. Well, now you can see the signs are gonna divide to one, which is gonna leave me at one over a cosine of x, which is equal to a secant of x. Um, again, we'll probably wanna use the quotient. Whenever tangent is paired with a sine, a cosine, cosecant, or secant, you're gonna to wanna to use the quotient identity. Only time you're gonna to wanna to use the, reci uh, the reciprocal identity is when it is paired um, with cotangent. So in this case, we have tangent of x divided by sine of x. Um, da, 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 what was I doing? Okay, yeah, so we're gonna rewrite tangent as sine of x over cosine of x divided by sine of x. And again, if we wanna get sine of x off this denominator here, I will multiply by one over sine of x. Okay. So what that does is that makes my denominator one here and that divides out the signs here. Just leave me with a one over a cosine of x, which is the same thing as secant of x. So you can see actually these are the exact same things, right? Because eventually to get the sign off the, or dividing by sine is the same thing as multiplying by cosecant, right? So these are redundant problems just written in a different format. So it's an important thing to kind of think about that. Like dividing by sine, a lot of times people will be confused on that, but again, if they multiply by cosecant, they're fine. Well, again, dividing by sine is the same thing as multiplying, right? Like dividing by something is the same thing as multiplying by its reciprocal. The reciprocal of sine is cosecant. So if you get confused with the division, sometimes just look at it as a multiplication. Um, for this one, we don't really need to do much. We have a function multiplied by itself. So therefore that's gonna be cosecant squared of x. Sine over tangent, I'm gonna just write this as sine of x over sine of x over cosine of x, multiply by the reciprocal, that goes to one. And then on the left-hand side, we'll have cosine of x over sine of x. Do I wanna do that or I wanna do, yeah, okay, that's in the numerator, that's right. So therefore the sines divide out, those will all divide out, right? Cause that's really sine over one that's in the numerator, right? So you can really just put this like over one so therefore the signs will divide out and therefore you're just left with cosine of x. This is going to be secant squared of x. Let's write, now here we're gonna to wanna to use the reciprocal identities for reciprocal and quotient here. So I'll have one over um, cosine of x over sine of x over cosine of x. When I multiply by the reciprocal, You can see now the cosines divide out and I'm just gonna be left with, those will both divide out. Now I'm just gonna be left with one over the sine of x, which is cosecant, eh, cosecant of x. All right, um, cosine times secant. Now this one again, nice, like we're multiplying something by its reciprocal, right? So I can write this out, cosine of x times, you know, one over cosine of x, but you guys can see like that just goes to one. So anytime you have something multiplied by its reciprocal, like if you recognize that, it's done. Uh, or it's just gonna equal one. In this case, um, again, let's maybe do this a different way. Let's just rewrite this as cosecant of x times cosine of x. Well, cosecant of x is going to be one over the sine of x times cosine of x right, which is equal to cosine of x over sine of x, which is equal to cotangent of x using the quotient identity. So you can see a lot of times, rather than doing all this division that I've been doing and multiplying by the reciprocal, if we write these division properties as a product of the reciprocal, 
Um, this is, we're doing the same thing. We're just doing a lot less work and that's going to make our work go by faster. So now that we're on the second half of this worksheet, that's what I'm going to be doing for all the quotient problems. All right. Um, however, for this one, it's going to be sine of X, um, times the cotangent, which is going to be cosine of X over sine of X. And again, a lot of times, guys, it's very helpful to still write these out because one of the problems that I'll see students do is they start getting comfortable with this stuff and they'll stop writing it out and that's where they start making mistakes. So, you know, obviously I want you to get to the point where you can do a lot of these on your own um, without having to write them out like this, like just knowing cosine is over sine and then times sine, sines will divide out, you're gonna get cosine, but just be careful with that. I don't need to write this one as a quotient or as a product because I see it's the same function divided by itself, which is just gonna equal one. Um, here, let's go ahead and write them out. This is going to be one over cosine of X times cosine of X over the sine of X. So that's gonna leave me with one over sine of X, which is equal to cosecant of X. Next one, cosecant of X over cosecant of X is just equal to one. We like those problems. This is tangent times tangent. That's gonna be tangent squared of X. Um, here, let's go and rewrite secant times the reciprocal of cosecant, which is sine. So secant times the sine of X. So secant is gonna be one over cosine of X times sine of x, sine over cosine is going to be tangent of x. Um, let's rewrite this as the reciprocal. So dividing by cotangent is the same thing as multiplying by tangent. Now I'm not gonna, re, I'm not gonna wanna rewrite tangent uh, or gonna wanna write that as the quotient identity here. So I'll do cosine of x times sine of x over cosine of x. Not sure why I ran out of space there. So the cosines divide out, which is leaving me with a sine of X. I like not giving myself space, I didn't. <laughs> uh, sine of X times sine of X is going to be sine squared of X. Let's go ahead and rewrite, dividing by tangent is the same thing as multiplying by cotangent, right? So in reality, this is cotangent of X times cotangent of X, which is just going to be cotangent squared of X. Over here, cosine of X divided by cosine of X is going to be equal to the sine of X. Um, let's see, this is going to be cosine of X times one over the sine of X, which is cos ah, cosine of X over sine of X. Dividing by cotangent is same thing as, as multiplying by tangent. So really this is tangent of X times tangent of X, which is tangent squared of X. Dividing by cotangent is the same thing as multiplying by, co uh, multiplying by tangent. So we can rewrite this as cosecant of X times the tangent of X. Now let's go ahead and use our reciprocal identities. Cosecant is one over sine of my, our reciprocal and quotient. Cosecant is one over sine of X. Tangent is sine of X over eh, cosecant of X. No, sine over cosine of X. Um, what am I doing? I'm losing my mind. Here you can see the signs divide out. So that's sine of X divide out. So therefore I'm just gonna be left with one over cosine of X, which is equal to a secant of X. Um, dividing by cosecant is the same thing as multiplying by sine, right? So again, notice what I'm doing. I'm instead of dividing by the um, function, I'm multiplying by its reciprocal. And by changing these two multiplication problems just makes everything easier for me because that is just going to be sine squared of X. This is tangent um, times cotangent. Again, they're reciprocals of each other, so therefore that's gonna equal one. Or, I mean, you can think about this, is tangent of X, instead of using, you could, you could do this a couple of different ways. You could do the reciprocal identities, so tangent is equal to cotangent identity, or you could use the um, quotient identities, because a lot of times people get confused with this. You know, sine of X over cosine of X times cosine of X over sine of X. And you can see no matter which, if you use the reciprocal, if you use the quotient, or you just recognize they're reciprocals of each other, you're gonna get one. Um, let's see, multiplying by cosecant is the same thing, or dividing by cosecant is the same as multiplying by uh, sine. So let's go ahead and write that as cotangent of X times the sine of X. All right, so cotangent is going to be 
cosine of x over sine of x times sine of x. That just leaves me with cosine of x. Dividing by secant is the same thing as multiplying by cosine, tangent of x times cosine of x, sine over cosine. You can see the cosines are gonna divide out, leave me with a sine of x. And then last but not least, let's work with an easy problem. A function divided by itself is always going to equal one. And so I'm not gonna work through that. Um, go through this because we can just go through that division property. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is 36 examples of simplifying trigonometric expressions using product and quotient identities. I hope this was helpful for you, um, and I look forward to seeing you on the next video. Cheers.